Okay. Yes? It is my pleasure to interview uh, Bernardo Carducci, professor of psychology at the Southwest Indiana University and in addition director of the oh, help me find the, the, I'm the director, director of the Shyness Research Institute at Indiana University Southeast, which is right across the river from Louisville, Kentucky. So everybody knows uh, Kentucky Derby horses, uh, uh, Kentucky uh, 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 bourbon as well. So yes. And this is the main reason of this interview. Your study, your research in uh, shyness. I think the shyness is a very interesting, uh, not, how would you, uh, it's not an emotion. China. See that? No, it's, it's not a character flaw, it's not a disease, it's simply a characteristic of the individual's personality. It's just something like how tall you are, some people are taller than others, some people are faster than others, some people are more shy than others. So it's just simply a characteristic of the individual's personality. It's nothing to be ashamed of, it's nothing that needs to be cured. It's just simply part of who you are. So the, the first question is, how many people are shy? I have been doing shyness for almost 35 years, and we've been tracking that question, what's the pervasiveness of shyness? And we know that shyness exists all over the world. Uh, we've looked at shyness in many different cultures, and on the average, we would say about 40% uh -huh. of the general population in the United States is shy. And we have some data on some Italian yes. uh, uh, students uh -huh. as well, and the number is about the same. The little difference is how they deal with their shyness, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But yes. So everybody experiences shy, uh, shyness, even the Italians. Yes. <laughs> In fact, you, are, you did a lot of research about shyness. And what about, uh, in, in this comparison between Italian and American, what's the similarities and what's the difference? The similarities is, uh, the, big, the basic similarity is that both shy Americans and shy Italians, and basically shy people all over the world, they, experience, they have the experience of shyness in the same way. They all feel excessively self-conscious. They yes. tend to be highly focused on themselves. They think that everybody is watching. We call that shy narcissism. Uh -huh. You think everybody is looking at you. And that's what really holds shy people back all over the world. They think that because everybody is watching them, they need to be careful of what they do, so they stop doing, they slow themselves down, in a sense, right? So they don't approach people, they don't talk to people because they're afraid they're going to do something wrong. So the universal expression of shyness is excessive self-consciousness. The difference, the yeah. principal difference between Italian shyness in Italy and shyness in the United States is how the shy people deal with their shyness. The paper that yeah. you came to today shows that Americans deal with their shyness by turning to others to help them. Uh, yes. you no, know, they buy books, they go to therapy, for example, they join self-help groups, uh, group therapy, that sort of stuff. So they turn to others. It's more interdependent, we say, interdependent. Rely more on other others to help them. Italians, the, 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 the shy Italians, tend to do what we call intrapersonal strategies, strategies within the self. So they try to go out and meet people, for example. They try to go out and approach people, talk to people. Uh, they try to change the way that they think, cognitive therapy with themselves. They try to think about themselves differently in terms of their shyness. So the big difference is what they do about it. Now I'd like to know why that, why is that? And I think it has something to do with the difference between the Italian culture and the 
American culture. In, in, the, in the American culture, there's much more pressure on individuals to be outgoing, to be extroverted, to be loud. And so people think they need help with that. Whereas in, in Italy, I think there's more of a communal sense of people and family. So you feel less threatened by taking risks, by going out and trying something new with yourself. So it's a more, I think, a more supportive culture. Yes, maybe in addition... Let's do some research together and answer that question. Yes. Let's do that. Yes, because uh, I think maybe in addition it seems to be strange for Italian people to consider emotion something that you can manage reading a book. Right, right, exactly, exactly, good. That's a, I think that's a great start to answer that question. Yes. Okay. So, so there, are, there are some, there are many, many similarities, but I think there are some subtle, some subtle yeah. differences, and I think for, tr for, for, to help shy people, we need to be sensitive to those kinds yeah. of things. And another very interesting uh, question is the relationship between shyness and introversion. Yes, many people make the mistake of thinking yeah. that shyness and introversion are the same thing. They are not. They're two totally different psychological constructs. They may look the same, but they're very, very different. For example, if you see two, you see an a, a, a introvert yes. and a shy person at a party, yes. both uh, of those people are against the wall, right? They're, they're away from the, the other people. The introvert is standing against the wall, is away from the, 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 the social situation because they prefer to be, they want to be. They find all that stimulation too much, so they withdraw to, to, to avoid that stimulation. They can be social when they want to be in smaller groups, but they tend to, they select themselves to be outside of the action, right? So that's a choice they make. Shy people are standing against that wall or away from the action because they don't know what to do. They want to be in the, they want to be with others. Shy people are very social. They just don't know what to do. So when you look at a shy person and an introvert, they may look the same, but inside, in the mind, it's totally different. The shy person is in pain because they want to be with these other people. They just can't. So that's the big difference. Shyness has more to do, shyness is more similar than to extroversion than it is to introversion in terms of the motivation to be with others. Shy people want to be with others, prefer to be with others, they just don't know how, and that's what is so painful for shy people. The desire to be with others, but can't think about, you know, you wanting something, a car or a job, and you can't have it, how that makes you feel. That's how shy people feel. So it's a big problem. Capisco? <laughs> yeah, capisco. Capisco? And uh, on the other end of this continuum, there is social phobia. Yes, shyness is not the same as social phobia. They both involve anxiety. There's no mistake about that. They both involve anxiety. But when you think about the difference, people with social anxiety, social, social anxiety, for example, these people won't go to a party. They can go to work. Right? They could hold down a job, but they won't go to a party. They won't go to a, an art reception where lots of, there are lots of people. Social phobia, those people are afraid to get out of their house, right? The shy person, they're very social. They'll go to parties, right? They'll go to art openings. They'll go to where there's lots of people. In fact, what, what, they'll force themselves to go. They just don't know what to do once they get there. So that's the big difference. Shy people want to be in a social situation. They just don't know what to do. People in social anxiety don't know what, don't even want to be in those social situations. So that's the difference. Uh -huh. Make sense? Yes. And uh, another, in, another intri intriguing question is, 
uh, Phil Timbardo worked with you. <laughs> <laughs> we worked together. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I've known uh, Professor Zimbardo for many, many years. In fact, the, the way that we connected was I was a very shy boy. When I was growing up, very shy. I had very few dates with girlfriends when I was growing up. And I read an article that he wrote about shyness in 1974, I think it was. And I read that article and I said, oh my gosh, that's me. And so I started reading more about shyness and doing what the article said and working on my own shyness. And every time I had a chance in school to do a paper or a research project in college, I did it on shyness so I could learn more about shyness to help myself, but also hopefully to help other people as well. And through my continued work on shyness, uh, uh, my path crossed more and more with Professor Zimbardo, and now we are uh, 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 pretty good friends. Uh, because yeah. of that, and we, we do other collaborative projects now as well. We had a, a symposium um, at the convention uh, called uh, The Demise of Guys, The Trouble That Young Men Are Having, yes. and, yes. and, and what, what, what we can do about that. I wanted to ask you, uh, what about this hypothesis of that this the demise of <laughs> demise of God. Yes, as they became shy. It's it's not so they, much that we, yeah <laughs> well, yeah well it's it's what it's it's part of it I think is is related to shyness, and I think my studies on shyness have are related to the problem that these young boys these young men are having because as Professor Zimbardo pointed out what's happening is they are withdrawing from social connections. They are spending more time on computers, spending more time oh, yes. playing war games, that sort of stuff. And they're losing the ability to connect with other people outside of the computer. So it's much easier to be on the computer than to go out and try to make friends, try to go out and, and uh, be successful in school, leave your house to, to, to find a job and a career. And that's what we consider the demise of guys, the, 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 the social withdrawal. They're losing this connection to, 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 a, to a greater society. And my work goes back, my contribution to that goes back to my work on shyness. One of the things that we try to do to help people become more shy is teach them how to talk to others, how to make conversation, how to make a, a, a small talk. And so, my contribution to the symposium was to say, let me show you how this work on shyness can be applied to this problem now with the demise of guys. So my whole point is, if you know how to talk to people, you're going to prefer that versus sitting in a computer, sitting in a room by yourself. The problem with these guys, the, the, the problem with the demise of guys, is they're losing that ability to talk, and it's becoming harder and harder to go out and connect with people, so what you do is you stay home, right? And so what I'm trying to do is make it easier for these folks, not just these men, but 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 anybody to connect with us. That's the Italian way, right? The Italian way is to, is to connect with others. Yes. And so I think for me and my sense of my connection to, 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 to be an Italian, an Italian-American, comes back to that, that, that sense of, of, of community, that sense of, of connection, that interdependence that's so, so critical. And is there a difference between your vision of China and Zimbabwe? No, 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 no. It, ours, we, we are very, very similar in terms of the kinds of things, that the way that we think about China and the kinds of things that we do about China. I mean, he, uh, uh, the stuff that he is doing now on the Imagine, Hero Imagination Project that you talk about is getting people involved at a bigger level. I, my work is trying to get people involved one-to-one, -one, how to get you to be friends with this person, to be friends with this person, and, and, and so it begins to snowball, it begins to, to build. So the, the, the core values are the same. 
We just go at it, you know, many, many different ways. And I think that's what we need. We need lots of different ways. Some people approach it through cognitive therapy. Some people approach it through biofeedback to help you relax in social situations. My work is how to, how to yes. teach people to talk. It's a bit more of a behavioral approach. Ah, yes. but, it, but again, it's like every other issue in psychology, it's multi-faceted. You have to come at it. There's no one answer. There's no one solution, right? So we need all the help we can get. So if you're interested in, in, in shyness, come talk to me. <laughs> Whether you, you're shy or you know somebody that, we need lots of help. There's lots of work to be done. Okay, I really thank you about this conversation about shyness. And uh, before, now I would like to introduce another <laughs> topic. Oh, uh, we, and uh, we, we, before we go, we, of course, we have to promote our books, right? I know you wrote a lot of books. I've got some books on shyness that, uh, that, that people can, can read, and they're, and they're designed to help people to understand their uh, own yes. shyness. And so that once you understand your own shyness, then you can begin to start helping yourself. It, it, it truly is a matter of understanding and appreciating your shyness. Once you can do that, then you're in a better position to help yourself. And I think through the, these books and the work that you do at the Cognitive uh, uh, Institute, it, it can be very, very, very helpful. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're totally your right. This is your interview, not mine. Your book is Shyness. A bold new approach. Oh, it's called and shyness. Is sort of behavioral. Yes, the, what's this new yeah, approach? Yeah, the, the, this bold new approach. The bold, tell, the, yeah, the bold new approach is. Tell us yeah, something about Yeah, this. the bold new approach is to think about shyness in a totally different way. The way I think about shyness yeah. is what I call being successfully shy. That's the bold new approach. There's nothing wrong with shyness, uh -huh. right? You could be shy uh -huh, and yes. successful. I'm a successfully shy person. I work on my shyness every day. The key to that is understanding the nature of the dynamics, the thoughts that shy people have, the things that shy people do. Once you understand that, then you can begin to take action to control your shyness instead of your shyness controlling you. That's the problem with shyness. The shyness holds you back from your dreams, from your goals, from approaching somebody that you find attractive, or from applying for a job because you don't think you're going to get it. You're too shy to, to, to approach the, 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 the people asking for the job or applying for the job. But if you understand your shyness, you can control that shyness instead of the shyness controlling you. You don't have to cure shyness. There's no cure. You don't have to cure. There's nothing yes. wrong with being shy. You just have to learn how to deal with it more successfully. And that's what these books try to do. That's the new approach. It looks a metacognitive approach. Absolutely. Yes. The problem is not shyness. It's if you worry about shyness. Yes. It's, it's the meta shyness. Yeah. Problem, exactly. No? It's the yes. meta shyness. It's it, it, when we talk about shyness. We talk about shyness of the body, so that's yeah. anxiety, that's arousal. You know, the, ex the you, you you get aroused or excited or worried in a particular situation. That affects your ability to think when your body is highly aroused. So we say you have to deal with that arousal. You have to learn how to control the the, the, the arousal of the body, but you also have to know how to control shyness of the mind, the, the beliefs that shy people have, that shy people think about social situations and themselves totally differently than non-shy people. And, and, and in the book, we describe what those pat shy patterns are. And then once you understand what those cognitive problems are, then you can begin to start to correct them. But first, you have to identify them, right? Then finally, there's the behavior of shyness, what shy people do. For example, in a social situation or in a simple conversation, shy people do things in a conversation that are totally different than what non-shy people do. And the things that shy people do work against them in this situation. They make it difficult for people to meet them. They make it difficult for people to talk with them, for example. They put up these barriers. So when we say you deal with shyness, it's the A, B, C's of shyness, the affect, right? The behavior 
and the cognition. That's what you do at the Cognitive Institute. That's the approach. It's a multidisciplinary uh, uh, discipline approach. Right. That's how you have to do. But you have to understand that shyness, shyness is so misunderstood. Like the very beginning, they think introversion and shyness is the same thing. No. No. So that's what we try to do to get shy people to recognize their shyness and to recognize better that they're not alone. There are shy people all over the world. That's the biggest problem for shy people. They think that they're the only person who's shy and everybody else is having a good time. We say, look to your left, look to your right. Chances are one of those persons at that party is shy just like you. So go talk to them. Help them with their shyness. That's the bold rule. Very interesting. Thank you. So, Now, a word about this. I'm the honor to join the Italian American Psy Psychology, Assembly. Psychology Assembly. Tell us, I, I wanted, as I told you before, I'm very moved to see how you, Italian American or Italian Canadian, are moved <laughs> when you meet uh, an Italian. Yeah. <laughs> what the The, the nature of, of, of our uh, assembly is basically to help bring people together, and mostly they're Italian-American psychologists. And these are individuals who, most, most of them, their parents or grandparents came mm -hmm. from Italy to the United States in the Great Migration, right? Yes. The, the Great Migration. Uh, and lots of these people, of course, who came from Italy, Uh, were not able to get educated because they didn't speak the, the, the English language. They, they spoke Italian. So they came and they, and they had jobs that were hard and, and didn't make much money, but they worked hard. And they raised their kids to work hard. And so I'm part of those kids. And, and what happened, at least for me, and this is a story that lots of our members tell, that their parents, both my, both my mother and father, spoke Italian. My mother's Sicilian, my father's uh -huh. Napolitan. They, they spoke Italian to each other. Yes. Sicilian dialect, Napolitan dialect, a <laughs> little bit different. But they, they spoke to each other, but they didn't speak it to us. And not yes. because they were hiding anything, but my dad told me, he said, Bernie, he said, I didn't speak to you in Italian because I wanted you to learn English. He said, I never got. I never had a good job. Never was successful with business and making lots of money because I couldn't speak the language. I had to work hard with my hands and with my back. He said, "I didn't want that for my kids. I wanted my kids to be successful Americans." And so, with that advice, you know, we went to school, we studied, we worked hard, and now we're successful academics. We're successful yeah. psychologists. Is that the program, right? world famous psychologists now. And so now that we are successful as American psychologists, what this group tries to do is to use those skills, how to do research, how to do investigative uh, uh, analysis to, to reconnect with our Italian heritage. So we, we get together to try to promote that. So because of my interest in my Italian heritage, I have started to do research with a number of Italians uh, on a shyness in Italy, yes. right? But we encourage our members to, to do these collaborative projects to make that connection again. We have members in our group now who do research on things like stereotypes about Italian Americans. We have uh, uh -huh. a, 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 a person in our group They're doing a book on grieving but Italian daughters for their mother. So these are Italian-American psychologists that are trying to reconnect with the Italian experience. The question I have, the, well, the question I really have is, and I ask everybody this question that I meet, is I want to know who was the first Italian-American to get a PhD in psychology. We don't know who that is. You don't know? We don't know. And I think a problem that I'm having 
is lots of the early Italians who came here anglicized their names. Ah, yes. So you don't, you know, they may be. My yeah. dad's name was Arduino. When he came to Ellis Island, the guy, the, the clerk said, I can't pronounce that. Your name is Edward. And ah, so yes. from that one, he, yeah, he was Edward, right? And so I know that that probably happened with people who went to graduate school because you didn't want them to know that you were Italian. You wanted them to know that you were American. Yeah. So they changed their name. So we're, we're going to look into that. I, I'd like to know. So if anybody knows, you call me. and We want to find that out. But, but, that's, our, but that's our group. And, and uh, a couple years ago, in 2009, our group uh, uh, organized uh, uh, in collaboration with the University of Palermo. Yeah. We had a joint conference. So we brought many... Uh, 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 psychologist in our group to have a, 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 a psychology congress in uh, in Palermo. In, in 2009. In 2009, yes. And then we're hoping to come to Milan in uh, 2015. We're already trying to build some excitement. So you'll see me again. You hope or you plan? We're, we're planning this. We're planning to do this. We're, we're, planning, we're bringing people together already, trying to organize uh, some papers and some symposia to do that. So. You'll see me in Milan. Oh, okay, so, so yes, <laughs> it's many. So it's already, it's our, Constantino is already talking about this. Luciano Bate is already talking about this. So we're getting people excited. In Milano in 2015. 2015. This is really a, a great news. <laughs> well, maybe we could do something on yes. cognitive therapy and shyness together. Okay. Sure. Agree? <laughs> see, you see, he shook my hand, so you know, he promised. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. It was a really great moment. Prego, <laughs> Vivi.